What's up, fish friends, and welcome back to Casual Reef Keeping. Thank you, Kayla, for joining me on the couch. <laughs> Not in front of the camera, but she's on the couch. <laughs> Before we get started, don't forget to click that like button. And, and subscribe! Yeah, smash that subscribe button. Every little bit of help uh, supports our channel, so don't forget to click subscribe. Anyway, today we are doing some magnesium testing, which is not something most people do very often, myself included, to the point where my old magnesium test kit actually expired. Um, the Red Sea test kit, I think, lasts two years. I'm not sure what it is, but it expired. So it's in the market for a new test kit. So in our Facebook group, Saltwater Reef Keeping and Aquariums, I asked, what's everybody using? And I got two big recommendations. One, Elos. And number two, the new Hanna Magnesium Checker. And I say new even though it's really, it's less than a year old still, but they had to reformulate the reagents. There was an issue with the batch of reagents giving bad readings. So we got a new, new and improved one. I ordered this from saltwateraquarium.com mostly because I just wanted it. I like the Hanna Checkers. I use them for almost every other test possible. So I figured, why not keep it in the family? But the other suggestion, the Elos kit I ordered from MeLevesReef.com. So thank you, Mark. Love you, uh, Mark. And I wanted to give it a shot because it also came highly recommended, and it's a regular manual test as opposed to something a little more automated. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. So let's get started with the Elos kit. So, something neat I noticed when I was unpacking it is that little logo where it tells you what the test kit is, is actually the instruction booklet when you pull it out. So that's kind of clever for their packaging is they don't have to make separate boxes. So it comes with this little quick starty guide, which is what I'm gonna reference. I have reviewed it already just so that I didn't sit here fumbling too much trying to figure things out. Reagent A, Reagent B, Reagent C is a powder, D is a dropper again, vial, and a little stopper, and our spoon. I also have a sample of tank water already pulled out so I don't have to get up, so you guys don't have to stare at my butt a few times. Alright, so step one in this test, as I'm referencing here, is three milliliters of tank water. I could have sworn this came with a syringe. I have another one here. I must have misplaced that already. And that is why I have a case of these 10 mil syringes. I cannot recommend this enough. Got it on Amazon. They're single use, you know, medical single use, but obviously we reuse them. So first I'm gonna rinse this. I am gonna draw up a full 10 mil. Make sure any residue from previous tests or manufacturing in this case is removed. I've got a waste bucket next to me on the floor. Alright, so we've got our nice clean vial now. Shake reagent A for 15 seconds. Oh, almost skipped a step here. I still need the three milliliters. So we're gonna draw up our three right to the meniscus. This first step is to figure out our first number. This ELOS kit uses a calculation to determine your result. It's going to be your first test result number of drops minus your second test number of drops times 50. So we're going to give that a shot here. Now, based on previous reviews, this should take almost 30 drops. So I might fast forward through this part for you guys. You're going to add a drop and stir. One, two, six. Oh, started to turn. Seven. yellowy. 28. 
nine. It's pretty green. Thirty. So we've got our green, and it's staying at 31 drops. So that's our first number. So we're going to remember 31. Right, Kayla? What? 31. 31. Don't forget 31. Not going to forget 31. 31 is our X value in this calculation. See, I'd be in the video, but, you know, Animal Crossing is going on right now. Animal Crossing is life? Animal Crossing is a priority, Kyle. <laughs> So we're going to rinse again. So we dumped that out, just to be clear. I dumped out that first sample. That was 31 drops. All right, so we had a little oopsie between steps one and two that resulted in a spill, and the vial rolled off the table and cracked. So I've got a spare checker vial we're going to give this a shot with. Luckily, I didn't need to reuse it. So it's still the same sample. And the first step has no bearing on the liquid in the second step. I mean, you got to use it for the math, but we're good. So we're going to draw up our three milliliters. Three milliliters in here. At least these Hannah ones I know for a fact are thicker, because I'm sure we've all dropped a few of those. Now we need reagent B here. Put five drops in. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to do 1.15 mil scoop. That's the smaller of the two in this little fancy ELO spoon of this powder reagent C. And then we're going to give it a good little mix. Not with the spoon, of course. You don't want to get liquid on the spoon. Shake it off a little bit, get a nice level scoop for consistency here. Okay, put that in the box. Put everything else in the box so it's out of the way here because we don't need it anymore. We've got this nice pretty purple. And our next step is going to be to add reagent D drop wise until it changes from purple back to a blue. This one should be like less than 10, depending on my magnesium. One. And now it's blue, and we're gonna make sure that stays for 30 seconds. So we got five, and what was our first number, Kayla? 31. 31. So we got five minus 31 is 26, and times 50, oh, yeah, I'm going to use a calculator. I should be able to do that in my head, but I do. So that should give us 1,300 ppm of magnesium. And does it say what the, uh, might be on the full paper manual, that's here somewhere, what its full uh, margin of error is. So we've got 13 ppm here on the ELOS kit. Now we're going to move on to the Hanna Checker. Should hopefully be much easier. <laughs> the important stuff, coffee. I don't need this for that test. Take it out of the sleeve. This comes in a larger case, much like the calcium one. Mostly because the reagent is huge. You get this big old bottle of reagent, two cuvettes. Magnesium checker itself, which I already put the battery in. That was a, as I'm sure many of you know who use these things, getting the batteries in there the first time is a giant pain. Because the way it like, without any spring force on the one side, you gotta like kind of get a, like a razor blade in there to pop it open. Always a pain. Uh, we need one pack of powder. It's got two five mil syringes with tips for each. So we're going to follow the 
quick start guide again because, I mean, yeah, they've got longer instructions. Both tests do, but do you guys actually read these? I know you're supposed to, and I, I do eventually. It's like clicking okay on the terms and conditions. Like, who reads that? Yes, who, who reads that? And I know you guys aren't going to, so let's see how simple this one is. Turn it on. Yes, this one's gray. Do they run out of colors or something? I don't know. It says add C1, press is blinking, which is where we want to be. Now the first step is going to be, in this case, this is clean, brand new. I am going to rinse it with a couple milliliters of tank water first. Shake, 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 shake. Now this calls for four milliliters, so you're going to use it one of these tips and one of these syringes. Now something to keep in mind since you're using this tip, and this tip is about one milliliter and not all four, is that you're going to have an air gap. That's okay. You don't need to pull the liquid up to the four or, yes, I already opened this too because that was another challenge. So you're going to have an air gap and that's okay. So you're going to pull the stopper up to the four, not the liquid, to account for the volume of the tip. So that's four milliliters of liquid here. Going to go into the vial. Okay. And we're going to add five milliliters of tank water with the other tip. You don't want to use the same tip because now if you're taking it directly from your aquarium, you risk whatever residue is on the outside of this from this reagent, which does have a couple hazard warnings on it, then you're putting it in your tank. You don't want to do that, so you're going to use a different tip, and you're going to draw up your 5 mil, again, to the stopper, not the liquid. 5 mil of liquid. You can vet. Give it a light mix. And there is a warning on it about not having bubbles. So I'm going to invert it gently. You're not going to shake it so that it mixes thoroughly. I'm just swirling it a little bit, make sure there's no bubbles. What if it does have bubbles? What happens? Um, if you've got bubbles, I would sit there and tap it or slowly invert it or swirl it just to work the bubbles out. Why do they say no bubbles? Bubbles affect the light transparency through the test. And the way these Hannah checkers work is they're a, they call them a colorimeter, but it's also a photospectrometer. It's just a fixed spectrum, which it should say which it is on the box, where it, there's a little, you won't be able to really see it on the camera, there's a little diode on one side and a receptor on the other side that's gonna measure the light waves of a specific frequency that go through the liquid, and that's how it measures the difference. They usually put the yeah, light emitting diode. This is 610 nanometers. Silicon photocell. Method adaption of the colorimetric EDTA method using CalMagite indicator. I am not a chemist. I'll let a chemist explain that one. So now that we've got that in there, we're on to step five here. We're going to press the button. And it does its, its zeroing, so this is its reference point. Come on, you can do it. In the meantime, I'm going to prep oh, sorry, no. our packet reagent. I usually pick the corner the way the lines go it a few times so that the powder reagent goes into that corner and then I'm going to just give it a quick tear around it and pop it open so that it can act as its own funnel. So now we're going to add the reagent. I always pinch it front and back because it looks side to side. I don't want to leave a fingerprint or skin oils that could affect my reading. I'm going to gently pour that in there. This says to shake or invert 18 times. It's incredibly specific, or 30 seconds. 
and it shows a little picture showing not to leave any particles remaining. So this time you want to make sure that everything fully dissolves. So I usually do my inversions first, this way if I get any air in it. Again, I can just swirl and help get them out. Just give it a quick look. So now it's this nice dark purple. And based on the shade of purple it is, it will give you your magnesium reading. So that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to put it in here. And it's going to be a long press for to start the three minute timer. When the three minutes is up, it will automatically test. All right, the timer is just finishing up. We got 1370. So the Hanna Checker's accuracy says within plus or minus 5%, which at 1370, I'm going to calculate this here, 1370 times 0 0.05 is plus or minus 68 and a half. So that is within tolerance of the ELOS, and I was just looking up the ELOS accuracy. Batch validated by NIST. Okay. I mean, well, it's probably plus or minus 50, given the single drop is worth 50. So I would say these two are pretty much within range. I'm happy with the Hannah Checker. Um, I don't have any problems with the ELOS one. It was just much more complicated. But I don't think it took any bit longer Especially, you know, as you get used to doing it, it's just bing, bang, boom, do all the tests. So that was our take on doing two different magnesium tests. I will probably spot check the HANA every so often with either an ICP or the ELOS just because HANA checkers are easy. And as long as you can confirm for your own sanity that they're pretty accurate, I'm pretty happy. Um, and talking to Mark about the accuracy of the ELOS one in the past, Magnesium test kits can be off simply because of the scaling. You know, if we're talking, we're doing math with one drop, and each drop is worth 50 ppm, essentially. You know, if I screw up by one drop, I'm deviating my own answer by 50 ppm. So there is that human error um, element as well. But checking magnesium is still pretty easy, though. ELO's kit, more steps, but easily done. Hannah checker, even easier. Not sure which is more accurate at this point. When I get an ICP test result back, I will let you guys know though. Thank you guys for watching Casual Reef Keeping. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe and leave a message in the comments if you'd like to see anything else from us. Thanks and stay have fishy a fishy friends. Day. Or have a fishy day. Yes, thank you Kayla. Thank you. Yeah, but I'm probably going to cut it out because I was adjusting the camera. <laughs>